In this new episode of Sailing Directions, we'll take you to discover the island of Elba, right in front of the coast of Tuscany. As usual, we'll talk about the ports, the bays, where you can find shelter, the winds, also potential dangers. But we also talk about all the beautiful things we can see on the island itself. So, let's go. Elba is located right in front of the coast of Tuscany. In fact, it is part of the region. To arrive here, if you want to charter a boat, you have three options. You can go to Marina di Scarlino or Punta Ala or Cala dei Medici. Marina Cala dei Medici is one of the many bases of NSS Charter, the largest charter company in Italy, and they provided the boats with which we came here, a Lagoon 42 and an Oceanus 40.1. Once you arrive here, you can go around the island. It's about 48 nautical miles. The island itself is 224 square kilometers. In fact, it is the third largest island in Italy, after, of course, Sicily and Sardinia. Being this large, you can always find a place where you can shelter. In fact, there are no less than 130 bays where you can stay at anchor. Besides that, you have other options. You have eight mooring fields and five ports. The smaller ones are Rio Marina, Marciana Marina, and Marina del Campo. But you also have two very large ports, Porto Azzurro and Porto Ferraio. They provide excellent shelter from practically all winds, and you can both stay at anchor in the bay or go inside the port. But for all the practical information, you can click on the link below the video and download our Elba notebook. You'll find information on ports, mooring fields and bays, but also context for things like restaurants or mechanics. To talk about Elba, we have with us Simona Pasqua, one of the skippers that NSS recommends to its clients. So without further ado, let's find Simona and go visit the island. We are in Porto Ferraio in the north of Elba. Porto Ferraio is the name of the town you see behind me. It is the name of the historical port of the town and it is also the name of this very, very large bay. Inside this bay you have lots of options. You have actually two ports, you have one mooring field and lots of place where you can stay at anchor. To talk about the nautical aspects of this bay, I have with me, as promised, Simona Pasqua. Hi Simona. Hi Gabriel. The helm is yours. Okay, thank you. Porto Ferraio, not everyone knows as a big peculiarity because it's the holy harbour in Italy in which you enter taking your left rather than your right, so in and out on your left. So you enter the port on the left. Yeah, exactly. But be careful because not everyone remembers or knows it, so maybe you can find somebody coming right in front of you. Uh, the harbour has inside berths for 70 boats up to 80 meters. Uh, they've got lazy line up to 40 meters. The bigger boat uh, needs to go on anchor, so anchor and uh, um, astern lines. They've got all the services, water, electricity, trash. Uh, the bins are right in front of the marina office and um, in front of them uh, you can find a few other birds. There are five that are transit, so they are free if you are lucky enough to call ahead. And one is for disabled people. Yes, and you cannot reserve them. You must call. Yes, you on must the same call day. on the day okay. exactly. Uh, and the other thing well, we notice about Porto Ferraio, which is actually where we're staying, is that it's very, very attractive, very, very picturesque, which means there's a lot of people. Cars up to nine o'clock, maybe, yes. then they become pedestrian, but in August there'll be a lots, lots of people. So if you're looking for excitement and a picturesque place where to stay, that's absolutely your choice. But if you want something more quiet, then there are other options. We mentioned another port, which is over there. It is a modern port called Esom. Mm -hmm. And what can you tell us about that port, Simona? ESAM has got space for 300 boats, roughly, from 3 to 35 meters, all with lazy line, and they've got all the services. The marina is also a shipyard, and is about 10 to 15 minutes walk to town. Yes, so in the unlucky case you have a problem, they can take care of it. Besides yeah. that, there is a mooring field. 
Yes, there is one here in Portoferraio, eight in total in Elba. The one here in Portoferraio is for big boats uh, up to 81, uh, sorry, up to 18 meters and they've got a total of 21 buoys and lots of space so you can rotate easily. Yes, so we mentioned eight mooring fields, but that's true only if you have a small boat under 10 meters. If you have a larger boat or a longer boat, well, then you have to, the only mooring field is actually that one. Yes, exactly. But luckily for you, there's also lots of place where you can stay at anchor. Here in this bay, especially, it's extremely, extremely sheltered, practically from all the winds. Yeah. What spot would you recommend, Simona? It's better to go on the southwest corner, especially if you are defending, you know, from Misral that is blowing quite strongly. There is going to be the better spot. The depth is between two to five meters. The bottom is muddy, but it's a very good holder. So if the wind is blowing very strongly, go there. Okay. I think we said everything about the nautical aspects of this bay. Shall we go visit the town? Yes, let's go. Let's go. Abel was I, era saw Elba. This is a palindrome, a phrase that can be read both ways, and it talks about the most famous visitor of the island, Napoleon. Napoleon arrived here on May the 3rd, 1814, and disembarked the following day from the frigate Undaunted as Prince of Elba. Now, many of us would have been happy with that, not Napoleon. After 10 months, he was to leave for the 100 days and for the final epilogue of Waterloo. When Napoleon arrived here, his name became associated with the island in the mind of people. But the island actually had a long history before him. The Truscan had come here to mine iron, and the Romans came here to build their beautiful villas, of which you can still see the remnants. Cosimo I Medici built impressive fortifications, which we would like to show you. So let's go visit Portoferraio, starting from its most famous visitor, Napoleon Bonaparte. <music> So, Simona, now it's my turn to talk. What would you like to know about Portoferraio? I would like to know something about Napoleon. Okay. Napoleon arrived here, as we said, on May the 4th, 1814. At first, he stayed in a place called the Biscotteria, the biscuit factory, which is currently the town hall. He didn't like it very much. He said, no, 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 this one too. And he moved to his first residence, the Villa dei Mulini, which is up on the hill you can see behind me. This villa was nothing compared to the palaces of Paris, but was better than the Biscotteria. It had 10 rooms, a very, very beautiful garden overlooking the sea, from which Napoleon could spy on the ships using his telescope. The Villa dei Murini hosts a nice little museum. You can go there absolutely worth a visit. You can visit the garden. And from there, you can go up to the terrace. There's a cafeteria, very, very nice view. His second residence was Villa San Martino. Now this was outside Portoferraio. It's surrounded by the park, a bit on a hill, so he meant it as his country residence. In fact, he purchased it to attract his wife, Marie Louise, who had gone back to stay with her father, the Emperor of Austria. He wrote to her, inviting her to come and join him on Elba, and he wrote to her practically every day, but she never responded and never came. The villa has two parts. The first upper part is where Napoleon actually stayed. The second part with the columns was added after his death by his nephew, the Prince Demidov, who was a great fan of his uncle and meant this in honor of him. But Elba is not just Napoleon, correct? Absolutely. There are many other things you can see. And there's another great name, in fact, associated with Portoferraio in particular, which is that of Cosimo Medici the I, the first Grand Duke of Tuscany. In 1534, there was a disastrous raid here in Elba made by the Ottomans, led by the famous courser Barbarossa. To protect against future raids, Cosimo Medici ordered the building of the fortifications we see nowadays. He built the walls and the two forts, Fort Stella and Fort Falcone. 
And these were built very quickly. In only four years, uh, Fort Stella was finished. The fortifications are a great place to visit. You can go and it's a very, very long walk. You can go do the perimeter of the walls and you can visit Fort Falcone, which hosts a very nice museum. And again, go up to the terrace, have a coffee, admire the view. Besides that, what I would recommend also is going in town. The town itself is very big. Very nice. Very, very nice. Has lots of buildings dating back to the uh, 17th and 18th or even 16th century. And also lots of little shops, nice alleys, nice little restaurants where you can have something to eat. So absolutely worth a visit. Having said that, we have to pick our next location, which is... Rio Marina. Rio Marina. We actually already filmed the bays around the island and also the ports. So uh, what now we want to do is have a sort of virtual tour in which Simona will illustrate the qualities of each location. Okay, let's start. Let's start and let's start with Rio Marina. Simona, take me to a nice location so we can talk about Rio Marina. Hi, I want to go closer to that rock over there. It's called Scoietto. Okay, how long? Oh, it's very close, few minutes. All right, let's go. Let's go. Oh, this is very, very nice. What do you think? Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful colors, the lighthouse up there. Very, very nice. Can you go ashore? You might try, I've never done it. Okay, I won't then. <laughs> <laughs> We're in front of Lo Scoglietto, Little Rock in Italian, ready to begin our tour of the island of Elba. We come out of the bay of Portoferraio and turn right, go clockwise, and we find Rio Marina. Simona, tell me something about Rio Marina. Yeah, Rio Marina is located in the northeast part of Elba. It's a small harbour and has got space for 40 boats, about up to 15 metres, because the depth inside is just 3 metres and 50. <coughs> There is also a crane to lift boats out of the water. They have got all the service. And one thing to be careful of, that there is the ferry that arrives there in Porto Ferraio, Cabo and Rio Marina are the only three arbors in Elba. So be careful while you are maneuvering over there. Okay, and what about staying at anchor? Is it possible? Is it possible? But I wouldn't suggest to do it. It's better to go to other places because for the waves that the ferry they might create. And about the wind, Rio Marina is exposed to all uh, the wind that goes from uh, northeast to, to southeast. So if you want to stay at anchor, do not choose Rio Marina. Also because you have another excellent option very near, which is the Bay of Porto Azzurro. Simone. Correct. Porto Azzurra is inside a fjord, a very sheltered place uh, inside the harbour. You have space for around um, 130 boats, 125 up to 24 metres and 5 up to 60 metres. You have got lazy lines for all of them, all the services, so water and electricity. There is also the gas station inside, is on a floating pontoon. The only peculiarity of Rio Marina is about the trash. You mean Porto Azzurro? Porto Azzurro, sorry, yeah. Right. It's, the it's only a, peculiarity is the trash. It's the trash, What's yes. peculiar about the trash of Porto Azzurro? Is it the quality of the no, trash? No, it's not the quality. It's just because you can throw it away just using particular <laughs> bags that are given to you by okay. the harbour because there are ecological islands and they read the QR code on the bag. And they don't open the bin unless they read no. the QR code. Okay, no. that's uh, very advanced. Okay, uh, what about staying at anchor in the bay? You can, you can stay right outside the harbour. The depth over there is going to be between 12 and 15 metres and the bottom is grass. So maybe it's going to be better going a little bit more inside the fjord where you're going to have a bottom that is muddy and the, the depth is between 2 to 5 metres. So yeah. a much better holder. Absolutely. And of course you're facing the east so you're exposed to the east, the easterly winds. 
but you're also in front of the coast of Tuscany. So the fetch isn't very long. So even if the wind is blowing from that direction, the waves won't be very tall. Having said that, uh, what else can we say about Porto Zuro? Well, let's talk about the town, for example. Oh, the town is nice, it's small, and the harbour is right there in front of the town, but nevertheless, the boat has got privacy. That's very nice. And also, the town itself is absolutely worth a visit. It's very picturesque, lots of little alleys, shops, cafeterias. But also, around the town of Porto Azzurro, there are two places that I would recommend visiting, if you have a chance to rent a car. The first is Capoliveri. You leave Porto Azzurro, you go out of the town, turn left, go up the hill and you arrive at Capoliveri. It's about 10 minutes. It's very, very nice. It's a hill town. It's got a little theater. It's got a great terrace with a great view, with a coffee shop. Absolutely worth a visit. Uh, if you go down and proceed on the same uh, direction, you can find the fort of Volterraio. This is a very famous fort. The foundations are Etruscan, no less. And the fort was built in the 1200s by the people of Pisa and later renovated by the Appiani family in 1440. It's a massive fort built on top of a peak and it has never, never been conquered. If you look at it, you can see why. Besides that, there are two other little bays right outside Porto Azzurro that you were mentioning. Can you talk about those two bays? Yes, these one are very close to Capo Focardo, quindi Focardo Cape. They've got uh, a depth that goes between 5 to 15 meters. The bottom is sandy. The wind comes from northeast to southeast. Great, so let's go to our next location. We turn around the eastern corner of the island and we go west along the southern coast. And that's where we find a port called Marina di Campo, right? Yeah. Talk to us about this port. Marina di Campo, it's a little port, has got space for just 20 boats up to 20 meters, and they've got also three public space with anchor stern lines. It's a small harbor, it's open to all the southerly wind, but be careful also with the one that comes from north because the wind comes from the Gulf of Procchio, which is in the northern part, and uh, it goes into a channel and because there are no mountains that are going to shelter you know the entire bay you're going to feel the wind it's not going to create waves with northerly wind but you are going to feel the all all the wind you have so even if it looks protected from the north it's not actually protected from the wind but only from the waves yeah exactly okay and in marina di campo you find a very nice restaurant called Contiki, which we recommend, and also a very nice beach where you can go uh, for a swim. There's also, of course, the bay where you can stay at anchor. Yeah, which is right in front of the beach, in front of the arbor or the beach. The depth is going to be between 5 and 10 meters, sandy bottom, but as wind has got the same problem that we said earlier for the dock. Right. Okay, let's proceed to our next location, which is... Fetovaya. Fetovaya, the famous bay of Fetovaya. Fetovaya is really nice. It's a cozy bay, has got a stretch of land that goes towards south and protects a beach, a little beach. The depth over there is between 10 to 15 meters. The bottom is sandy, so a good older, but it's always full of boats, uh, yes. uh, big and small. And you need to stay outside uh, some buoy that are the limit for the beach Absolutely. and the stretch of land that is a marine park. Yes, I've been there in August and it gets very, very crowded. It's rather small, so I don't recommend spending the night there. Also, one thing we should talk about is about the winds. If you're in Fetovaya, say you go there in June uh, and you want to stay there, uh, what should you worry about? Uh, it's open uh, to all the wind uh, from uh, east to south and it's sheltered from the other. Okay. So, In that case, you can stay. You can stay over there, yeah. Leaving the Bay of uh, Fetovaya, you arrive uh, at a place called Pomonte. Now, this is not very sheltered, but the bottom is sand. So if there is not wind, you can stay there. And it's absolutely worth a visit because there is the wreck of the Elvis Scott. I saw it and it's really nice. Absolutely. Uh, the Elvis Scott uh, was this ship. It was sailing in 1972. 
At night, there was lots of wind. Unfortunately, it hit a rock and it foundered. But it got stuck on the rock. And so what they did, they cut it in two. Half the wreck went this side, half the wreck this other side. It's now on the bottom. Because it's very shallow, you can actually see it very well. So absolutely worth a visit. Just make sure that you don't land your anchor right on the wreck. No. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, with Pomonte, we are already on the western side of the island. If we go round the corner, round the Cape, we start proceeding on the northern coast of Elba, which is also very, very nice. And when the wind is blowing from the south, that's the place you want to go. Yes. Let's talk about, well, the place I really like was Marciana Marina. Which is actually our next place, our next stop. Marciana Marina um, has got space for 300 boats inside, has got two different managements. The harbour of Marciana Marina, which is on your right when you enter, and it has space for 100 boats up to 40 metres. And the other one is Circolo della Vela, on your left while you enter in the harbour, and has got space for 200 boats, but from 3 to 15 metres. Both of them, uh, they give all the services, so water, electricity, and they're going to help you while you moor. No problem also over there with the trash. Uh, so mm. just go ashore and visit Marciana. Can you stay at anchor? Yes, you can. You just need to stay in an area right outside the harbour. There is uh, a spot that has got a depth that is between 8 to 15 meters. The bottom is sand, so a very good holder. You are going to be protected from all the wind that goes from south to west, while inside the harbour you are also protected from west to north. Right. And if you stay at Marciana Marina, you should absolutely go ashore. There's a very nice beach, but the town itself is very, very nice, very picturesque, especially the part on the left. If you go ashore, there's a place called Borgo del Cotone. Uh, there's a very nice restaurant. I don't remember the name, but you can see the images. Uh, when you arrive, there is a sign Borgo Cotone. There are some steps on the right. Go down. That's a restaurant. Very, very good. As we leave Marciana Marina and we continue east along our tour, we arrive at two very nice bays. One is called Enfola and the other one is called Viticcio. Viticcio. Talk about this base. Enfola is a very nice base. The bottom over there is between 8 to 15 meters. It's grass and there is a salmon pontoon. So you can go ashore over there with your dinghy and ashore you are going to find a bar, a very good restaurant, uh, um, a camping and there is also the base of the marine park in, uh, in Elba. Viticcio is right after Enfola Bay. It's different from all the other bays and golf that you find in Elba because it's very wild. While the others have got beach with umbrellas and, uh, and chairs, Viticcio instead is very natural and wild. The bottom over there is between 5 and uh, 10 meters, sandy, very good holder, and uh, is sheltered from all the wind that goes from north to south, same as Enfola. Okay, so if we continue east, we arrive again at Porto Ferraio. That was our starting port, and our tour of Elba is finished. But remember, this is only a small selection of the many countless beauties of Elba, of its 130 bays. So to learn more about Elba, click on the link under the video and at the top of the comments and download our Elba notebook with all the extra information you need to visit this island. Before I go, I wish to thank Simona. Thank You're you. Welcome. And I wish to thank again NSS Charter for providing the boats with, which made this video possible. If you enjoyed the video, click on like and let us know. The appointment is for our next video of SVN Network. Thank you.